Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. In this lesson, I'm gonna talk about how to tune a guitar by ear. And this is not the normal way that it's taught. There's a very basic kind of traditional way that it's taught and I will show you what that is. But I'll also talk about why I think that that's not the best way to do it. And just with a couple of slight adjustments and a, and a few steps that we take, I think we can do a tuning by ear method that is much more effective than the typical version. So if you don't know how to tune a guitar by ear at all, this will be great. If you do do it, um, then this will be kind of cool for me to show you the way that I think is the most effective after having tried you know, many varieties of how to tune my guitar by ear over many years. So let's jump in. So I got the guitar nice and out of tune. Almost like it's just been sitting around for a while and we got to tune it up. The first thing we do have to do, step number one, is we want to get the A string and you can get that however you want. So you can use an app on your phone, you can use a tuner. There's the little clip-on tuners that are um, quite popular. Um, I'm gonna do it with a tuning fork because, actually because my clip-on tuner ran out of battery and I had this sitting around, I just started using it. I've been using it for, for many months now just doing this way, so it's kind of cool. I think it's, I think it's neat. Uh, so I just hit it on my knee and then I put it on the bridge there and it gets me an A440 pitch. And then I'm gonna pluck the A string and tune it up to that. If you're playing an electric guitar and you want to do this, because it is kind of fun, uh, then you can just put it right up to the pickup and it's going to resonate through your amp. And, and I do that. I do the same thing with my Telecaster that I play often. So when we're doing this tuning at all, we want to listen for the beating, which is the wobbling of the notes as they get closer together. And simply what we're listening for is trying to get rid of that. We're trying to smooth it out. So even though this is a much higher A than this, this pitch, this higher A pitch is inside of this one. This is, that's one of the harmonics that is in this note, which is a whole other lesson I'll talk about another time. But um, we should be able to hear a little bit of that Whoa, 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 that wobbling sound whenever we're trying to match two pitches. And we just try to get rid of that. So it sounds nice and smooth. Once we have our A, then we can go through this, uh, this method that I wanna show you for tuning by ear off of the A string. So the typical way that tuning is taught is that you would play the fifth fret of the lowest string, and then you play the open next string, the open fifth string. And you would try to match those. You could reach over while it's ringing, which is a little hard because you kind of cover your ear, but that's one way to do it if you wanna hear it while it's ringing, or just try to tweak it, check it again, tweak it, check it again. Um, that's a great way to tune. We're actually gonna use that portion and you'll see how it's gonna be different soon. But this method of tuning that is the most standard way to tune by ear, you would go to the next string and play the fifth fret and then the open string. Same way, you play the next string, fourth string, fifth fret, third string open, try to match those. Then you would shift over to the fourth string just because of the tuning of the guitar, uh, the fourth fret rather, you switch over to the fourth fret, third string, fourth fret, play that, play the open second string, try to match those. And then you'd go back to the fifth fret of the second string and then the top string, try to match those, and you do that. Here's why that's a problem though. Because we are tuning to the A string originally, and then we are getting further and further away from the A string. So let's say from A to D, you tune those really well. And then you're tuning from D to G. Well, what if you're just so slightly off and it's totally normal to be very slightly off, imperceptibly off, but then as you're, imperceptibly off each time it starts to be uh, perceptible. So by the, by this string, you're not actually still having matched it to the original source. And that's the concept that I wanna switch around and have us just tune everything to the A and I'm gonna show you exactly how. Little side note here, the guitar can never be perfectly in tune. This is a matter of something called tempered tuning versus just tuning. In order to play in every key on an instrument, we have to be in what's called tempered tuning. So we're actually making compromises and nothing is perfectly, perfectly in tune. Again, that's a topic for another lesson that would be very fun to get into, but that's why it's so frustrating to tune the guitar, have it feel good in one place, have it feel, you know, out of tune in another place. Um, and there are many reasons why that could be the case. And it's, it's just an ongoing challenge for us to deal with our tuning on the guitar. So let's go back to the A string and tune it with this other way that I wanna show you where we're, we're referencing the A string 
every single time. So it's very simple. We're gonna reference the A string in two different ways. And then there's a couple bonus ways to listen for it if you want to you know, go even a little deeper on it. This first way is gonna be exactly what we did. We're gonna play A on the sixth string. So that's A fifth fret and then the open A. We're gonna try to match that. Okay, but then we're also, every string, we're gonna do it in two places. So I'm also gonna play the open low string and that note on the A string. Okay, see what we're doing? So we're playing an A on this string and then comparing it to the open A. And then we're playing the note of the open string we're trying to tune. So now I'm gonna play E here and the open E and make sure that both of those sound good. The bonus is that you can listen for this interval of a fourth between the two of them. So if it's off a little bit, for example, like I can listen for the interval of the two strings. There's a similar quality of kind of beating. This is really good ear training because now we're listening for a fourth interval between these two strings to make it sound sweet. And then see if that sounds good. See if that sounds good. And we kind of compromise between all of them if we have to, right? And it's very important that our guitar that is set up well and the intonation is good and I'll talk more about that at the end just if you have issues with that and what to do about it. Um, then we'll go to the next string. A is already in tune so we're going to tune the D string now. So we're going to do fifth fret just like the standard way. Fifth fret, this is a D note that we're playing the open D. Okay, now we're going to find A on the D string and make sure that also sounds good and listen for this interval of the fourth. So that happened to be in tune, so we didn't need to change it. Let's do the next one. Now, instead of going, playing the fourth and third string together, we're gonna to play A, open A. We're gonna find the note A on the third string, because now we're tuning the third string. So, second fret there. Okay, so it's a little out. Tweak it. And I like to kind of hear it moving. I'm not doing this to tune it to that note, but if it's off, I'll... I like to hear how much it's moving, so I'll play the open string. Okay, now that we did that, we're going to say, well, what note is this? This is third string, this is G. We're gonna find a G on the fifth string. So now. Okay, and I'm gonna tweak that a tiny bit. And then check it here. Okay. Now we're actually tuning to the A string every time. Let's go on to string two. Now this one on string two, you could play open A and then you could find A up here. And you absolutely can tune to that, but it's two octaves up and you can do that. But you could also play the harmonic on the fifth fret. It gets exactly that pitch. So that means you are touching, you're not pushing down, you're just barely touching right above the metal, right above the fret, getting that sound from the fifth string. And that is this pitch. Okay, then we can match it to that. Now, whatever string this is, which is B, we're gonna find a B. Make sure that also sounds good. Okay, now let's go to the final string. This E, this seventh fret harmonic of the A string is an E note. You could also just play an E. Okay, <laughs> I'm a little too in tune to do it. I, keep, I thought I would be more out of tune. That's so nice to have the hands free. So you can do harmonic. Remember, you're touching just barely right above the metal. And I like to do a rest stroke with the thumb or rest on the next string. Now you can let go and that pitch is there. Okay, it's a very common way to tune with harmonics, but we're referencing the A string every time. Now we wanna do the other way where we are going to play the A note up here and play this A right here. The same one as before. Fifth fret harmonic. Make sure that sounds good. You could also just play the open A and then play that A. So now we've tuned every string in at least two places, making sure it sounds really good against the A every single time. So then you can play some chords, make sure everything sounds good. And if it doesn't, two things. One, you might have to go compromise again and go check, did, or, you know, maybe getting the guitar out after not playing it for a long time, the tension is pulling it back out of tune. Sometimes you have to tune a few times in a row in, in a sitting, um, or we just have to adjust a few times, go back and, and tweak it again. But if it's really not getting in tune, then you probably have an intonation problem on the guitar where it's not perfectly getting in tune with itself um, in the way that it's supposed to, in which case you need to take it to a luthier, someone that works on guitars, someone that does a guitar setup. If your guitar is out of tune with itself, it's 
so, so, so worth it to do this because you want your guitar to have two very important things have good intonation, be in tune with itself, and two, have a good action so the strings aren't way too far off the fretboard and it's not you know bad for your hands to try to work on it. Those are two big things that a luthier would do for you when you go take it in for a setup. Just like everything, it takes some practice to get used to that and get quick at tuning by ear, but it's good for the ears to listen in that way. It's good for getting in touch with the nature of our actual instrument instead of just using, you know, a checking or tuning on every single note. I personally uh, really like it. And if I go through a phase of using a tuner, uh, clip on tuner or an app or something like that, um, my ears get a little bit, uh, you know, atrophied from listening in that way. So I kind of like staying in touch with making sure I can listen to the tuning in that way. and and kind of battle with the guitar, um, the intonation with it a little bit, because it is really hard to get it in tune because of how it can't actually ever be perfectly in tune. And so um, I rather like to tune that way. And there's so many other ways to tune. You can compare, you know, fifths of intervals. You can do um, other spots of harmonics and a lot of great ways to check. But this way that I just showed you in this video is the way that I've settled into doing it pretty reliably over the last uh, half year or so. So I wanted to show you. One of the beautiful things about being really nicely in tune is, is playing through lush chords. I have a chord chart called Chords with Color that is such a cool, unique chord chart that shows a bunch of the most common basic chords that anyone should know, a bunch of open string chords, but then also a huge variety of alternate options for those chords that you, so you can add colorful lush notes on top of those chords and, and switch them out so you can make your own arrangements of songs that sound unique or just explore sounds and, and theory of chords. Lots of great ways to use that chord chart. It also has a list of the top uh, 20 most common chord progressions. So just for that alone, it's worth it. And that chord chart is totally free. You can get it with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color. What I recommend watching next is my video about how you can play any song, almost any song, especially any popular song with only two chord shapes. It sounds crazy, but it's true. I could do a bunch of examples in that video. Just thought it'd be fun to recommend that. I'll put a link to it on the screen here on YouTube if you're watching there, or there's a link in the description too. So check that out next if you wanna keep watching. I post a new lesson video every single week. Next week's video is gonna be my top favorite jazz guitar albums of all time. That'll be a fun lesson. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.